How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm going to review Goyo Joe's Portable Surface Roughness Tester. A surface roughness tester is mainly to measure finished machine parts that has been through a surface finish process, such as grinding, or you can polish it. On a CNC machine, if the end mill moves very, very fast, then it's going to be rougher than if it does a surface finish move where it moves very slowly, then it's going to be a lot smoother. No matter the type of finish though, sometimes specifications require a certain kind of roughness. It has an accuracy of 0.2 microns. So this is in the hundreds digits of what it shows right here. Five micron diamond tip, so it's not going to wear out. Let me go back and unbox this and show you all the features and how it works. user manual QC card, the tester right here. There's an AC adapter, surface roughness instrument sensor, a little plastic guard, USB-A to USB-C charge cable, and there is a precision reference standard plate. This is 2.33 microns. It feels fairly smooth, but there's a light pattern to it. Attach the sensor to the main body, press and hold the power button to turn it on. I'll use the reference standard plate, put this right on top, press start to do the measurement. Two point five one eight microns. I'm just going to move this over a little bit and measure that. It's actually smoother than that little plate thing, 1.928. So I think I can measure this desk right here, the wood pattern, 1.117. So the larger the number it is, the rougher it is. So if I measure it this way, I know there's a lot of grains on this desk. So we'll probably see a higher number measuring this way, 1.671. If I push this and start it. Internally, there is a drive screw, you can see it over there, that moves this whole assembly in and out very slowly. You can see right in the center, there is like a needle-like thing right in the center. This needs to be very, very fine in order to get into the grooves. I'm gonna remove the probe, and the little piece of plastic guard is to protect your probe. So you just put that in there and put your probe back in. Now your probe can be protected a little bit more if there's anything that comes in and tries to hit it. When installing this plastic cover, make sure you have it seeded all the way in. Even if this comes out a tiny little bit, it will cause your measurement device to rock a tiny little bit. So make sure that it's pushed in evenly on both sides and now it doesn't rock. This little probe thing will fit right into the case. We don't have an extra probe, so put this back in. And there we go. This is the probe under the microscope. We can see there's a little pin right there and a flat spot over here. The flat spot is to prevent from pushing too much into the pin. So if it touches up against something, it retracts a little bit. Look at that. And it actually moves that little pin in and out very, very slightly. The circle scale here is in microns, that's 100 microns and that's 1000 microns or one millimeter in diameter circle. So I'm gonna compare this tip to that 100 micron dot there. We'll zoom in and it looks like that tip of that is very sharp. Each of those little squares is also 100 microns. I have an angle measurement tool. If you look at the back, it's a very smooth finish, but just something that this roughness tester can test. If I put it against that and slide it across, I'm doing this manually with my hand, of course. That little pin is going to dig into any tiny little grooves as it moves across. And the average movement of that little pin is the reading that you get. Let's measure the roughness of this stainless steel tool. Put it on and hold it in place and press start. Okay, so it's very, very smooth. 0.342, smoother than my desk surface. Now I can see there's a lot of grains going this way, right? And it's measuring this way. So if I turn it around 90 degrees and re-measure it, I should be able to get an even smoother reading. And now it's 0.281. So this is nice. It corresponds with what I expect. The included charger is a two amp USB-A. Plugging it in to charge, the red light turns on to indicate that it's charging and it's using 4.54 watts, which is less than one amp. Look at this indicator here. If I drag this device across that surface, 
it goes up and down a little bit, right? So the motors inside drags that thing for you at a specific velocity. The screen reads various things here, which kind of standard that it's measuring the roughness right now is on ISO. Plus minus 40 is the variation in microns that it expects on the surface. 2.5 millimeter is the length it would measure. So it's gonna do that five times. So five times 2.5 would be 12 and a half millimeters. So roughly half an inch that it's gonna move this little tip. So when I press start, Right there, that's about half an inch. And the RC is a type of filtering it'll do which part of the data to remove. Battery indicator on the top right. You can change any of these parameters to your liking. Just press menu, test set, press start. The parameter is RPC, RKU, RSK, RSM, RS, RV, RP, RT, RZ, RQ, RA. So I'll leave it at RA for now and press start. You can change the standard of measurement from ISO, ANSI, GIS or DIN. The cutoff is the duration it will do each measurement. So you can do two and a half millimeters, 0.8 millimeters, or 0.25 millimeters, and it goes back to 2.5. So I'm gonna do a shorter measurement, 0.25 here. You can do any number of evaluations from one to five. I've set it at five because it can then measure it multiple times. The range is what you expect the height variation to be, plus or minus 40 microns over here, but we can change that to plus and minus 160, 80, 40. So if it's really rough and it moves up and down a lot, you wanna change it to a higher range. Change the filtering type to RC, DP, Gauss, PCRC, and back to RC. I'd say the type of standard and the filtering will take a little bit of understanding here. For example, when you try to measure RA, it's going to use this formula to calculate the arithmetic mean of the profile. As it drags that probe across the surface, it's going to take a bunch of data points up and down like this, and then it has to combine all of this some way to give you a final number, and it uses this formula to do it. Just to show you, RQ uses a different formula. RZ uses yet a different formula. And when we're talking about the filter, RC removes the first two sampling lengths out of the five that you're doing. PCRC removes the first and last. Gaussian removes the first half of the first set and the last half of the last set. And the DP profile uses all the data. Now you probably want to throw out the first one probably because you set the probe down and you know maybe you messed it up a little bit so you're not dragging across fresh material. So there's different kind of reasoning for which one you want to throw out just based on what you want to do with the device. When you're machining something, there's always going to be a grain pattern. You want the grain pattern to be perpendicular to this dragging here. Otherwise, it's going to drag along the grain and you're not going to see any variation in depth. On top of changing all these parameters, we escape. There is a system set so you can change the brightness change the language, Chinese or English only. Units can be metric, inches, auto save off, auto off off, factory reset. The memory, you can actually save some memory in here and through the USB-C port, you can connect it to a PC. You can set calibration values here. You can also turn off Bluetooth to connect to it and also get some information on the device like serial number. You can either display this really big number here that is RA, arithmetic mean, or you can press the power button one time and you can get all of it. Press it again and you're gonna see a waveform of the surface here. The drive stroke is two and a half millimeter here. So it goes up and down very, very quickly. If I set the drive stroke shorter at 0.25 millimeters, we can see much more clearly how the probe tip is moving. It's almost like a cross between a sawtooth and a sine wave. Press the power button again, and it'll show you the Abbott curve. You can use this device while it's plugged in, so I'm just gonna plug it in right here. See, it's charging while this thing is on. I can push the measurement button, and it'll start measuring. But in the manual, it does say if you want the highest accuracy, you should not be charging it at the same time. Many times when it's charging it, the voltage might fluctuate, or noise coming in from the AC line can affect the electronics inside. Side. If you need accuracy down to the hundreds or thousands, you probably should use it on battery power. If you guys are interested in this surface roughness tester, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.